This is the new Nike Zoom 5 4 made for training, but with a carbon plate. Is it really a great training companion uh, to the Vaporfly Next percent? Will it give us a similar feel to a razor? Let's find out! Welcome back runners, if you like this content please don't forget to leave a like and uh, consider to subscribe so you won't miss any new video and uh, you will support the channel for free. Well, a lot of work for this video so uh, I would really appreciate your support. Don't forget to follow me also in Strava and in Instagram where you can find all the updates related to the shoes that I'm reviewing and I'm testing. All the links are in the description below. Today we're going to talk about the new Nike Zoom 5.4 uh, which is actually a, a training shoe but with a carbon plate uh, and we're going to see if it is improved uh, in comparison with the uh, previous version, uh, if it is comfortable and durable um, as a trainer should be. So let's dive into it. But before to start just a quick disclosure this is a pair of shoes that about me more money and no one is paying me for this review so let's get started the Nike Zoom 5.4 uh, is a, a road neutral shoe of 8mm drop uh, with a stack height of 39mm uh, uh, in the heel and 31mm uh, in the forefoot, so quite high. Same drop uh, as the Piron Tempo uh, or the uh, Adizero D06, uh, just to give you uh, an idea. It is unfortunately heavier uh, than uh, the previous version, but overall the shoe is pretty similar except in the upper. Nike has been working uh, over the years uh, um, to improve uh, the fit of uh, their uppers and uh, they made uh, um, a really good job uh, in this show but uh, before to talk about the, the upper let's start as usual from the outsole now the outsole is 111 mm wide in the forefoot and 74 mm narrow in the heel. It is a good placement of uh, outsole rubber, even though it is not that thick. Uh, the design is the same of the Vaporfine X% uh, with the entire forefoot uh, covered and uh, the sides of the rear foot are also covered uh, by two uh, rubber strips. The React midsole foam, uh, which forms part of the um, outsole, is exposed and uh, is more um, resistant and uh, dense than the average foams. Uh, so it should be more durable than the uh, Vavo Fine X% percent form. But of course not so durable as the other rubbers I used uh, on the Vomero or uh, Pegasus for instance, uh, which are thicker. Despite the stiffness of the rubber, uh, being thinner makes uh, the shoe more comfortable and uh, flexible and the grip is not bad at all, uh, even during uh, uh, flat carves, uh, despite the leaves uh, in the ground was uh, uh, working pretty well. Unfortunately, I didn't test it uh, on the wet, uh, uh, but it could be a, a bit slippery uh, considering its stiffness and uh, not really a great pattern. There is no torsion system, but the carbon plate prevents uh, um, the torsion and uh, gives uh, a snappy feeling uh, to the shoe as a, a razor. So I found the shoe pretty uh, stable as nappy. I must say overall uh, I like this uh, outsole, uh, but pity that they used uh, so thin rubber, especially in the rear foot, uh, which will not improve the durability in this area. Midsole now. Before we jump to talk about the midsole, uh, you know if you watch uh, my video that I do perform uh, some tests uh, and measurement uh, for the shoe, somehow just uh, uh, to confirm or justify my impression about the shoe. Uh, basically, I measure uh, the harshness of the midsole material used, uh, measured uh, using a, a durometer. And here you can see uh, how stiff is the uh, Nike uh, React midsole. Uh, the measurement is a three point estimation, which uh, means uh, three uh, measurements and averaging them out. Yes, I know the name of the uh, form is misleading uh, since there is no zoom uh, midsole, uh, but rather a Nike uh, React midsole. 
Moreover, I collected also the running dynamic matrix, uh, the average ground contact time, which is uh, the time between uh, uh, the first part of your foot touch the ground and the last part of your foot leaves the ground. Lower ground contact time uh, indicates a, a better response of the shoe. And the other metric is the vertical oscillation ratio, which is the ratio between uh, the vertical oscillation and the stride length, uh, which should be less than 10% in order to be more efficient. So uh, it is an indicator of uh, uh, running efficiency. And here you can see the different values which I collected for this shoe in seven different tests uh, at seven different paces from slower uh, to faster. Overall, from these uh, two measurements, I observed that the uh, response is great uh, even at slow paces and in comparison to other shoes, uh, the ground contact time is lower and I'm talking also about racers uh, uh, like for instance a new Adios Pro 2 uh, which has a slightly higher ground contact time at the same pace in terms of efficiency, it is really bad at slow paces in comparison uh, with the Adios uh, Pro 2, but great starting from 4 minutes uh, per kilometer, uh, better than the Adios Pro 2, which is pretty amazing for a shoe made for training. And I confirmed that during a slower run of 15 kilometers at a pace of 4 minutes 21 uh, seconds per kilometer, I felt the carbon plates difference and the shoe uh, felt slightly unstable due to the its uh, narrow uh, midfall and uh, rear foot uh, but on the other end it's good for getting your legs uh, uh, used to this um, particular ride uh, when you run faster so it's a really co good companion in my opinion of the next percent because you can use the zoom fly uh, for for fast trainings uh, with a longer durability but still having a kind of racer feel while other cable plated shoes utilize a rocker, the Zoomfly 4 and the Vavofy Next% percent have a unique forefoot uh, um, shape, which I believe makes them feel uh, uh, so fast. Uh, but of course, you can feel the difference with the Vavofy Next% percent because the different midsole forms used. The React form that uh, the Zoomfly 4 midsole is made of uh, is firmer and denser than the super soft and uh, super bouncy midsole of the uh, Vaporfine Next% percent 2, which is the Zoom X uh, form. This makes the ride uh, less snappy in the Zoom 4 and uh, also makes uh, it uh, not as comfortable uh, for long distance uh, runs, but anyhow, it's still uh, very well cushioned. Therefore, we cannot consider uh, the Zoom Fly 4 as a versatile shoe because uh, it doesn't handle slow paces really well. It shines when uh, you are doing a tempo runs uh, because its thin midsole makes it easy to pick up the pace and uh, when uh, going fast, uh, you can lean forward and load uh, the forefoot well. This is propel you forward like a, a springboard. Hopper now! Jumping to talk about the Hopper, uh, wow, that's an amazing fit. Uh, it wears and feels uh, like socks uh, uh, especially when you pick up the pace uh, no lateral movement at all uh, no uh, annoying frictions uh, simply fitting great uh, stable and breathable as well uh, because with the cold weather uh, i can feel my feet uh, freezing the updated the uh, mesh seems to be a lot softer and more comfortable than the zoom 5 uh, 3 upper and uh, it consists of two layers uh, the tongue and the collar are made uh, of uh, this um, stretchy um, flag knit, uh, which is denser and less breathable than uh, the mesh. There are now midfoot flywire um, cables that provide more support. A soft foam pod uh, on the inside of the heel uh, keeps your Achilles uh, locked in place and uh, it is comfortable even though it makes uh, a little more tricky to wear uh, the shoe. The heel counter is not rigid at all, so I didn't have any issue with it. The Zoom Fly 4 fits uh, through two sides, but uh, it's still um, on the narrow side, uh, so it's not suitable for wide feet. Uh, if you are used to land on the uh, external uh, side of your uh, uh, foot, uh, you might feel uh, the upper and uh, even the midsole, which is high. The upper has been uh, basically the only improvement in the Zoom Fly 4, uh, uh, but it is incredible how it changed the Zoom Fly um, into a trainer with a better comfort and stability. The lockdown is great uh, and uh, it's a lot more comfortable uh, than the stiff uh, plastic feeling uh, loose up of the previous uh, version. It has a much better foot lockdown than the previous version of the uh, Adidas Poston, which I love and uh, I know uh, Adidas is doing great uh, job in this regard, uh, so quite impressive. 
So in general, guys, considering the running dynamic metrics collected uh, uh, and my first impressions, I believe uh, I will keep this shoe in my rotation, especially for tempo, threshold and uh, uh, intervals uh, workouts, uh, uh, because it feels snappy and uh, it is super uh, efficient for uh, these trainings. Uh, suggested especially for training starting from four minutes per kilometer uh, pace uh, as we have seen in the chart. I'm impressed how much the improvement of the hopper can affect the overall feeling of the shoe. It's pity that uh, the shoe is on the heavy side. So I'm really happy of this newcomer in my rotation and uh, despite the price and the weight, uh, the original price is another 60 euro, but I believe it is already possible to find the shoe at a lower price. So guys, this is it. Uh, if you like the video, please don't forget to leave a like. Uh, if you want to see more, subscribe. Uh, as usual, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon in the next one. Ciao.